Welcome back to another rebuild here on NBA 2K23 Next Gen. In today's video, we are back with another offseason rebuild, and today we have the Sacramento Kings. Last season, Sacramento ended their very, very, very long playoff drought. They ended up going 48 and 34, which was good enough for the three seed in the Western Conference. Now, they did lose in round one to the at the time defending champion Golden State Warriors, but I don't really think that loss is really too, too bad. The series went seven games. And it was a really fun and really entertaining series. But this is a young Kings team that obviously does not have a lot of playoff experience. They got some really good experience in that series, obviously. And I've liked the moves they've made this offseason. They signed some bonus to the extension. They gave Harrison Barnes an extension, which was interesting to me. But some of the smaller, maybe under-the-radar pieces they've brought in have been pretty good. I fully expect this team to be back in the playoffs next year. Now, obviously, our goal today is to bring a championship to this team. And before we do that, let me know any other video ideas you guys do have down below in the comments section. Obviously, as I mentioned, pretty much every video recently, we're in a really kind of weird point in the NBA offseason right now. We're waiting for a couple shoes to drop. Other than that, it's just a waiting game until basketball's back. So, I don't know. It's pretty dead time right now. We're all waiting for 2K24, getting our wish list ready for that. And, uh, yeah, I'm excited to see what you guys want to see because, obviously, I'm pretty much down to do whatever at this point. So, let me know anything down below in the comments section. But, I, uh, I'm excited for this one, man. I think the Kings are a fun rebuild. They always are when I get to do them, and I'm looking forward to it today. So, let's get into it. So pretty much as always, we're basically at the point where offseason number one is already over. Of course, this is just going to be a three-year rebuild. Anytime you do a team that was, you know, in the playoffs, contending, whatever it is, it's a three-year rebuild. But this is a Kings team that I don't really think needs a ton of work in offseason number one. Now, I don't think like Harrison Barnes is a long-term small forward option. Other than that, though, I kind of like the way this roster is constructed. So let's just dive into it. De'Aaron Fox, 25 years old. Mr. Clutch Player of the Year. I'm excited to have him here. He's a very good player, and I have absolutely zero plans of moving on from him at any point in time. Uh, Davion Mitchell is an interesting one for me. So he's 24 years old. He actually develops really well. I don't want to say the problem, but the, the situation that might arise is... Uh, there's a couple different ones. The first being that he might be pretty expensive for a backup point guard, and I say that only because he's really not going to ever get starting minutes on this team. I just don't really see a way that he fits into the starting lineup with De'Aaron Fox. So if and when he gets to the point where he's just too valuable and too expensive that we have to make a trade, we might do that. But I'm not promising anything. He is a really good backup point guard option. Kevin Herter is here on a three-year deal. Malik Monk is here as well. He is expiring after this season. That is definitely something we're going to have to keep an eye on because he is a really good bench piece for this team. Colby Jones here as well, only 20 years old. Maybe can develop a little bit, potentially a Malik Monk replacement if we uh, move on from him at any point in time. Small forward spot. I was surprised when I saw Harrison Barnes get, it's actually $54 million, but this three-year extension. Again, I don't think he's necessarily a horrible option at the small forward spot. He's not the best playoff performer by any means, but he's a good veteran to have on a relatively young team in real life, but we'll see what we end up doing there. Kessler Edwards, in all honesty, will not be my backup small forward. Um, I'm going to probably look for some sort of replacement. Again, it's probably not going to be anybody great, but... We'll have an option or two. Uh, I'm a huge Keegan Murray fan. Good three-point shooter. I loved watching him this past season. I hope he can stay and continue to develop. And if he does, he'll stay starting the entire video. Uh, Trey Lyle signed a two-year $16 million deal or extension with this team, whatever you want to call it. Decent backup power forward option. Then obviously Sabonis to get the extension. It's technically not here. You can't edit contracts in the offseason. I'll put it in at the start of year one for us here. Uh, and then Nerlens Noel, Alex Lenz, some backup centers. Good depth pieces to have. And uh, yeah, I think at this point in time, we basically just need a backup small forward. So I'll look at our options, but I don't really plan on changing too many other things about this team. Hamadou Diallo, did he sign with with the team? Because that's that's kind of like the issue I'm at right now. I want to make sure he didn't. Because if he didn't, and he's a free agent still, I'll sign him. But if he did, I don't want to take away a player that's actually on a different team. Uh, so Hamadou Diallo, who last played for the Detroit Pistons, he's a free agent. All right, we're going to give him a two-year deal, $7 million AAV, and I think that's a really good signing, good young piece to come off the bench. Potentially a little bit of promise and a little bit of potential, so I'm excited about it. But other than that, I don't see anything major happening to this team. As I mentioned, we're going to roll with the punches in terms of Harrison Barnes. He'll probably regress a little bit, but we'll probably look for an upgrade next offseason. But I'm very content, very happy with this team as of now. See you guys at the start of year one. Before we get into the rotation, I just want to show you guys the extension that I put in here for Demonis Sabonis. This is actually the maximum amount 2K lets me give him now. It is more in real life, and I'm sure come 2K24, there will be an updated dollar amount, but this is literally the max AAV I can give him 
per season. So I just don't want you guys freaking out if you see that it's less than it actually is or what they actually agree to in real life because that's the max 2K lets me do. But let's go ahead and get into this rotation. It's a solid rotation. I really like the way things look. Here's how it's going to be. It's De'Aaron Fox, Kevin Herter, Harrison Barnes, Keegan Murray, Demonis Sabonis. Really no surprises in this starting five. I think it's one of, I don't want to say, a t I don't want to, I don't want to put a number on it. It's one of the, it's a really good starting five. Ben's unit's going to be Malik Monk, Davion Mitchell, Hamadou Diallo, Trey Lyles, and Nerlens Noel. So I really like kind of the top three on this bench. I'm not a huge Trey Lyles or Nerlens Noel fan, especially in the year 2023, but Monk, Mitchell, Diallo, these are all really good bench pieces for me. So I don't really plan on making any major changes. I think we're in a really good spot. Obviously, of Mike Brown, head coach of this team. Pretty good head coach. But uh, I'm excited to see what 2K thinks this team's going to do. I expect to be a top four seed. Hopefully, we can kind of live in those expectations. See you guys at the end of year one. I've been seeing this a lot recently. James Harden's won MVPs. Now, I'm not saying James Harden's can, like, completely wash or anything, but I think MVP James Harden, has that ship has definitely sailed, if you will. So, good for Harden. I mean, hell of a season, definitely. We won 47-35. and 35. It's pretty on par for how this team was in real life last year. Again, I do think there's a major move coming this offseason. We do have a playoff run to worry about, though. Victor Mbanyama is your Rookie of the Year, CP3. I mean, these first season awards are pretty much the same thing. Oh, you don't see that every time. Love seeing Keegan Murray win Most Improved. Absolutely awesome to see. J.B. Baker, Staff Coach of the Year. But that's absolutely tremendous. You can see we're a five seed here in the Eastern Conference, or Eastern, in the Western Conference. And, uh, yeah, that's going to be great. I mean, I don't look forward to playing the Suns in round one because, obviously, they have a lot of talent on that team. But... We're a good team nonetheless. I think I saw Portland actually took one of the top three seeds as well. Here is a look at the numbers on the season. It was Fox, Sabonis, Murray as our three leading scores. Monk, Herter, Barnes. I mean, yeah, I mean, I, I don't want to sit here and say that like Harrison Barnes is the reason why we're not winning 50 plus games. But if I'm looking at this starting lineup, he's probably like the one significantly obvious upgradable position. Now, Kevin Herter, maybe Keegan Murray at some point in time, but he played really well for us. I'm just talking overall wise, but it's mainly between Barnes and Herter, and we'll see when that time does come. But uh, yeah, playoffs coming up. Sabonis, so 13 rebounds game, absolutely awesome. Also, seven assists. Tremendous. I mean, you just love to see it. But here we go. It's the Sacramento Kings and the Phoenix Suns here in round one. How is Russell Westbrook, and where did Paul George come from? So Bradley Beal, I'm assuming, is, is now with the Los Angeles Clippers, and they traded Paul George and Russell Westbrook to make that happen. What? That's absolutely insanity. That's insane. That team scares the living hell out of me. I have, I mean, can you just imagine like everybody on this team in their primes? Insane. But yeah, this team is obviously still really, really good. We do go 2-2 two -two with them. We actually go down 3-2. We're going to game seven and we lose in seven. I'm not surprised we lost in seven. That team is definitely better than we are. Uh, it's it's not very shocking. Uh, we're going to have a Dallas Mavericks and a Cleveland Cavaliers NBA Finals here in year one. Let's sim through it. Cavs end up sweeping. Donovan Mitchell is your Finals MVP. All right. It is officially time for offseason number two, but this is the first offseason where we really have kind of full control of everything, if you will. Let's hit the draft lottery. I don't think we're going to have any picks in this lottery, not that anything that's been traded for or anything off the top of my head. Oh, good. Give the Thunder the top two picks. It's exactly what they need. And they also have number 10 and 11. Just awesome. All right, staff signing here. Uh, Mike Brown has decent ratings. I think his ratings should be a little bit higher. I do believe he's a really good head coach, though, so we're not going to move on from him. Let's head up to the draft. Do we have our own first this year? Not 100% sure. We do not. So we have the Dallas Mavericks second round pick this year. I'm not going to use it. We're not going to draft anybody. That's fine by me. We look at team player options. Everybody there can come back. And then we hit qualifying Kessler Edwards. Probably not. Wasn't really in the rotation. Maybe could have sent him to the G League to develop or whatever. But I, I didn't really see a fit there. So those are our only two major free or major our only two free agents. And uh, yeah, other than that, I think it is probably time for a Harrison Barnes trade. So. Let's see what we can come up with. I know Malik Monk's also a free agent for me. Good. It's going to let me re-sign him because I definitely cannot just let him go for nothing. He's a very important piece of this team. But other than that, yeah, we're going to look to upgrade the backup center spot between Noel or Alex Lynn. I don't think these are options anymore. But Malik, Malik Monk's back on a three-year, 40, almost $41 million deal. And then we'll find a center option after we find the trade. We're going to try to work a trade here with the Utah Jazz, see if they're in the mood to maybe let Larry Markin in. Switch over to purple. Now, Harrison Barnes and Colby Jones is my current offer. I highly doubt they're going to accept it, but he's also an expiring contract. Maybe that value is a little bit lower. So they don't take that. In terms of anybody else I can throw in here, I mean, maybe Trey Lyles, but he's still a solid backup option. I'd rather keep Diallo, and I don't think, you know, throwing Davion Mitchell in a trade like this 
would necessarily be too, too smart. So it's probably going to come down to draft picks. If you want my first round pick next year, that's fine. I'm honestly willing to give up a couple first just because I do think marketing makes this team significantly better. So you want three first round picks, they'll take it. Markkinen is officially a member here of the Sacramento Kings. So he'll be our new starting small forward. He's also due for an extension next offseason. Definitely have to keep our eye on that. Other than that, at this point, we only really need to go find ourselves a new backup center. And uh, our options for that, Hartenstein, Hernan Gomez, Yurtsvin, Sarek. I mean, these aren't really tremendous options by any mean. What I'm actually probably going to do is sign Luke Kennard, get a little cheesy here. I just, I don't really want like a scrub as my backup center. That just really doesn't feel smart for a team that we're trying to win a championship with. So we're definitely getting a little cheesy here and uh, maybe not the best thing in the world to do, but I think we can find a solid backup center option if we do move Luke Kennard. So let's just look at some options here that we are finding. I'm not really seeing much. This is Jock Londale here. Mo Wagner is not a horrible option. Deron Sharper got in yesterday's video, so I'm going to take a break on that. But uh, yeah, you know what? Let's go ahead. We're going to make this trade here with the Orlando Magic, picking up Mo Wagner. Really good backup center option. So other than that, I hope development and progression keeps going well, but I'm excited about the new additions. We'll see you guys at the start of year two. After losing the first round, we went ahead and made a major trade. We added 86 overall Lowry marketing into this team. I think he fits in honestly pretty well. I don't know. We're going to see how it all works out. It's De'Aaron Fox, Kevin Herter, Lowry marketing, Keegan Murray, Nemanja Sabonis. I like the way the starting five's looking. I, I think it's going to fit well together. Maybe not as much defense as I would like, but it is what it is. Malik Monk, Davion Mitchell, Hamadou Diallo, Mo Wagner, and Trey Lyles is going to be our bench unit. I think, again, Wagner's an upgrade there. Obviously, progression with Davion Mitchell is great to see. Malik Monk's still going to be the six-man spot. So, I'm excited. I do think this team, again, top four potential. Hopefully, true contenders. See you guys at the end of year number two. A significantly better second season here in Sacramento. We go 66-16. and 16. I'm assuming that's good enough for the one spot here in the West. And time will tell if we're a true contender here. Obviously, playoff bearing. Luka Doncic is your MVP. 0.3 rebounds off of a triple-double. DJ Wagner wins Rookie of the Year in Chicago. Anthony Black, sixth man in Orlando. Giannis is your deep boy. Taylor Hendricks most improved. Mike Brown wins the second coach of the year. So, we are the one seed, which is good. And, I, and I'm definitely happy and I'm feeling good right now about this team. But sometimes, again, I said this in yesterday's video, I have some really, really good teams and they play really well and have great records, and it doesn't necessarily translate to the playoffs. So hopefully this is not one of those times. Here's a look at the numbers on the year. Keegan Murray just absolutely unbelievable. What did he shoot from three? I'm just genuinely curious. 41, almost 42% three-point shooter. Beautiful. Absolutely exactly what I was kind of hoping for in terms of his progression up to an 85 overall. You truly do love to see it. But yeah, everything else looks pretty solid to me. In terms of rebounds, it was Sabonis and assists was De'Aaron Fox. So who's it going to be for us round one? The eight-seeded San Antonio Spurs. DeJounte Murray back in San Antonio. I've actually seen this happen a few times. It's interesting. Very, very interesting. Obviously, Victor Minyama won a rookie of the year. He's already a superstar. And, uh, yeah, I'm hoping we don't lose in round one because that would really, really suck. We are up 2-1. We make it 3-1, and they win game five. They win game six. Holy shit, thank you. All right, moving on to round two. Four-seeded Memphis Grizzlies. John Morant, Desmond Bain. They've added Chris Middleton to this team, along with Nikola Vucevic, creating a really, really talented starting five, and I'm honestly not sure how they can afford that because these guys are all getting paid. None of these guys in the starting lineup are on rookie deals, so... Let's see what happens. We end up dropping game one. We drop game two as well. So we lost two on our home floor, one one on their home court, win two on their home court, back on ours we win, and game six, we win four straight after losing the first two. That's awesome. Now we have MVP Luka, Kyrie Irving, Joe Harris, Grant Williams. I feel like Clint Capella ends up on in Dallas a lot. I actually wouldn't mind seeing Clint Capella in Dallas in real life as well. We're up 2-0 right now. We make it 3-0. And we're in the finals. We're in the finals, and we're taking on the defending champs here in Donovan Mitchell in the Cleveland Cavaliers. And look at Keegan Murray in a four-game sweep, just 58% almost from three. I mean, this is just, this is the thing movies are made of. Let's go ahead and get it done. We are up 2-0. We may make it 2-1. They make it 2-2. No, do not do this to me right now. Oh, my God. 2K is just fucking with me, right? You got to be fucking with me, right? Oh my god, I, I was feeling so good, and it all just, it, it just, it evaporated. That feeling of happiness just went out the window so fast. All right, well, Darius Garland's your finals MVP as, uh, yeah, we, we lost. We lost in six. That sucks. That sucks. That definitely sucks. All right, it is time for the lottery. I know I traded my next three years first round pick, so obviously we're not going to have anything this year. 
let's just sim through it real quick. And uh, yeah, I mean, again, I'm, I'm definitely hurting a little bit. I'm not firing Mike Brown. I still think he's a really good head coach. He did just win coach of the year and coach us to the finals. Uh, yeah, it doesn't happen often unless your name is Ime Udoka. You, you, do not co you do not coach your team to the finals and then get fired. Uh, I love Ime. I still wish he was here. All right, I'm going to do this trade with the Bucks. I do not need second-round picks. More of a nuisance than anything. Team player options, 100% bringing back Egan Murray. Qualifying Davion Mitchell. So now it's the time he could get a little bit pricey. I'm not saying that's a problem, especially for the final season. We also have some other free agents here. So Markkinen's obviously priority number one. Have to make sure we get him back. Davion Mitchell, how much are you asking for? Around 12 mil. Actually, not too bad. I've seen videos, and I've had it happen before. He's actually asked up to 20 million. I'm happy that's not one of those situations today. So I actually wouldn't mind bringing back Trey Lyles. He's probably one of the better power forward options we could actually sign. I say the same thing about Mo Wagner, just switch that to center. So uh, Hamadou Diallo is a free agent as well. So we have a lot of free agents right now that I definitely need to make sure I, I'll retain because these are good guys. And again, we were just in the finals. So there might be a major move coming still, but I have to make sure I sign these guys back. Uh, I'm going to wait on Mitchell because obviously I do want to go ahead and make sure um, that I give him a real contract. We're not going to renounce him. We're not going to renounce Diallo either. I'm hoping the game lets me bring him back. Also, I could have sworn I gave him a three-year deal. I don't know why that's that's happening now, but yeah, Hamadou Diallo is definitely somebody I want to... Can I? Is the game going to let me resign him? It is. That's good because I want to sign him back. He's a solid small backup, small forward option for me, and uh, hopefully he accepts it. Okay, he does. Now the decision comes, where do I want to make an upgrade and do I want to make an upgrade? Is a shooting guard spot potentially something I could upgrade? If it is, obviously we're going to have to include another player somewhere. So somebody's going to have to go. But I honestly don't think it's the worst idea in the world. And that's not to say Kevin Harder sucks or we absolutely have to move him. But maybe an upgrade could be that piece that puts us over the hump and actually winning that series and not losing in six. So let's maybe see if we can find a trade. If the right thing doesn't come along, then we're just going to roll with the punches. But I think something will come along. We're going to pull off this blockbuster here with the Portland Trailblazers, sending them Davion Mitchell, Kevin Herter, and two future first-round picks for Anthony Simons and Trey Mann. Now, I believe Simons is a really big upgrade over Kevin Herter. Now, losing Davion Mitchell is definitely going to hurt. He was a pretty important piece of this team, and now we did just sign him to extension. Not that this is a realistic rebuild or anything, but it does suck. But we're also getting Trey Mann back, and he is going to be my new backup point guard here. Again, we are losing something in terms of overall, but numbers-wise, really aren't going to be changing. So, Anthony Simon's definitely an upgrade. I am happy to have him here, and now I will officially see you guys at the start of the third and final season. After losing in the finals last year, we went ahead and made another major upgrade. Adding Anthony Simons to this team, I think, is going to kind of hopefully put us over that last little hoop we have to jump through. So, here's how it's going to look. De'Aaron Fox now joins Anthony Simons in the backcourt. I'm excited to see how they uh, kind of pair together, if you will. I think it should be fine. I'm hoping it's fine. Hopefully 2K agrees with me. Larry Markin in here. Keegan Murray just had an incredible season for us. Won a Western Conference Finals MVP. Obviously a, a tremendous, really big piece of this team and the success we could have. Sabonis so still here at the center spot. Bench unit, I will say, maybe got a little bit worse overall-wise. I don't think we're going to lose a ton of production, though. Malik Monk remains a six-man, followed by Hamadou Diallo, Mo Wagner, Trey Mann, and Trey Lyles. So... Again, hopefully everything goes to plan because I do think this team has championship talent and we definitely have championship expectations. So here goes nothing, man. I'll see you guys at the end of the third and final season. We go 59 and 23 here in our final season. Now that's not as good of a record as we had last year, but 59 wins is never anything that I'm going to complain about. It is back-to-back -back MVPs for Mr. Luka Doncic. Cooper Flagg is your rookie of the year. He's in Los Angeles. Markel Fultz, sixth man. Giannis wins Depoy. Jason Preston, most improved. Mike Brown, that's another coach of the year, which is obviously great. All these awards, all these numbers, they're awesome. And I honestly do love seeing it. But again, if there's no postseason success, none of it matters even a little bit. So here's a look at the numbers on the season. I really don't care who does what. Let's just get into the playoffs. It's going to be the eight seed of Houston Rockets. Fred Van Vliet, Jalen Green, Dylan Brooks, Jabari Smith Jr., Men Thompson coming off the bench should be a war crime. Let's him through this series. Oh, my God. Are you fucking kidding me? That's actually insane. There's... That's so insane. I mean, I just don't... What? <laughs> Who? I, I'm honestly... Like, I'm, I'm kind of speechless right now. I mean, I, I honestly am. Who sucked? You were not very good, Fox. You sucked big fat fucking elephant cock, Demonis. Oh my god, Malik, you were horrible off the bench. This is just... This is bad. This is just... Not the way I wanted to end the video in the Pacers. What the fuck? I don't know, man. I uh, I don't. I'm, I apologize, King fans. You guys had something good cooking, and I, I don't know what I did to it. But 
Yeah, I, th I mean, I thought we built a good team, and honestly, I I don't know. I want to do a fourth season, but I, I, I'm not going to, and let me explain to you why I'm not going to do a fourth season, because this, this happens before. I'm not going to say it happens all the time. Most of my videos, I tend to get at least one championship, but there are videos I don't. And if I do a fourth season here, I should have done a fourth season for those. I can't just pick and choose when I want to do a fourth season. So we came up short. We did have a finals appearance, but honestly, it all means the same if you don't win one. So we did come up short today, but we did build a hell of a team. And I definitely enjoyed having the, or doing this rebuild. And uh, hopefully you guys enjoyed watching. I think we did put together a pretty good team, but ultimately just was not enough. So my apologies there. And uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be back. And I, I, I think I will do another Kings rebuild before 2K24, maybe in like early September, right before it drops. So Somebody remind me of that in September. But yeah, man, other than that, I hope you guys did enjoy watching, even though, again, we did come up short. As always, if you guys do have any other video ideas, let me know down below in the comment section. We're in a very weird time right now where there's not much going on in all of the sports world besides baseball. So yeah, that's pretty much all I've been watching recently. But yeah, man, that wraps this one up. As always, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys. I'll catch you guys all in the next one.